as Samuel grew old. He appointed his sons to be judges over Israel. Joel and Abijah ruled from Beersheba. But they were not like their father, Samuel. They were greedy for money and accepted bribes and perverted justice. People started complaining about their unfair rulings. So the elders of Israel gathered together to meet Samuel at Ramah. They told Samuel, Look, you are now old, and your sons are not like you. Give us a king to rule over us, like all the other nations. We want a king. Give us a king. Samuel was displeased with their request and went to the Lord for guidance. The Lord replied, They are rejecting me, not you. They don't want me to be their king any longer. Ever since I brought them from Egypt they have continually abandoned me and followed other gods. And now they are giving you the same treatment. Do as they ask. But solemnly warn them about the way a king will rule over them. Samuel warned them of the consequences of wanting a king. A king will take your sons put them in his army. Others will work his fields. Or as craftsmen for him. Your daughters will be taken to become his perfumers. Cooks and bakers. A king will take a tenth of your grain and flocks. And you will become his slaves. When you cry out to be rescued from the king, the Lord will not help you. The people refused to listen and demanded. Even so, we still want a king. Give us a king like the other nations. We want to be like the nations around us. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. Samuel repeated what the people said to the Lord. The Lord replied, Listen to them and give them a king. So Samuel said to the Israelites, Everyone go back to your own town now. Later Samuel called the people of Israel to meet at Mizpah. By drawing lots, the tribe of Benjamin was selected. Then the clan of Saul. Then Saul himself. But he was nowhere to be found. They asked the Lord where he was. And the Lord revealed that Saul was hiding among the supplies. They ran and brought him out. He stood a head taller than everyone else. Samuel announced, Do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one else like him. Then the people shouted, Long live the king! Long live the king! Saul was thirty years old when he became king, and he ruled for forty-two years. He led the Israelites against the Ammonites and the Philistines. One day, Samuel came to Saul with a message from God. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Men and animals. Saul summoned his fighting men at Tel Aim. Over 200,000 soldiers. They moved south towards Amalekite territory. On the way they warned the Kenite to move away from where the Amalekites live. Or they would die with them. The Kenite had shown kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenite packed up and left. The Israelites slaughtered the Amalekites. They captured Agag, the Amalekite king. But Saul and his men spared Agag's life. They also kept the best of the sheep and goats. The cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs. Everything that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or of poor quality. The Lord spoke to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king. 
because he has turned away from me, and has not obeyed my command. Samuel was angry and sad, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel went to find Saul. He was told that Saul had gone to Carmel to set up a monument in his own honor, and then had gone on to Gilgal. When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. He said, May the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's command. Samuel demanded, Then what is all the bleeding of sheep and goats? And the lowing of cattle I hear? Saul admitted, The soldiers spared the best of the sheep goats and cattle to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We have destroyed everything else. Samuel replied, God sent you on a mission to totally destroy the wicked Amalekites. Why did you disobey God and rush for the plunder? But I did obey. Saul insisted. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag their king. The soldiers took the best sheep and cattle. But these are for sacrifice to the Lord your God. But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices? Or your obedience to his voice? Listen! Obedience is better than sacrifice. And submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion against what you are commanded is like the sin of witchcraft, and disobedience is like the sin of worshipping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, the Lord has rejected you as king. Saul confessed. I have sinned. I was afraid of the people, and listened to them. As Samuel turned to go, Saul took hold of part of his clothing, and it tore. So Samuel said to him, Today the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you, and given it to someone else. Who is better than you? Samuel then executed Agag, king of the Amalekites himself. Samuel finally agreed to go back to Gilgal with Saul. Then he went home to Ramah and never went to see Saul again.